And all right, so uh, I did this a few days ago, um, which was the Q and A over on my Patreon, asking questions for a the Dongan Rompa Q and A. Yep, that's right. We're doing a Dongan Rompa Q and A. But if you guys would like to be part of these Q and As, just hit the link below. Head on over to my Patreon, and you guys can hit the second tier uh, for, uh, and that's how you do. You can do. Uh, you can get ask, access to the pro to the videos exclusive over there. Uh, I don't know if the mic's picking that up, but someone's doing lawn mowing. Um, someone's mowing their lawn, but yeah. So if you guys would like to um, be a part of those, just hit the link below, head on over to, to my Patreon, hit the second tier, and you guys can start, whenever I do another Q&A prelude, you guys can start sending me questions to do here on YouTube. Um, but yeah. So this one got, has a little less questions, probably because I kind of figured that Danganronpa would probably get me less questions to do, but hey, you know, sometimes these subjects are going to be hit and miss. And yeah, I think I got a, I think I got about a good few people. I'm just happy I got any. So I can think of no better question to start off with um, than David Deister's first and only question, which is how did you get into Danganronpa to begin with? Um, I got into the show because, well, it was during 2020, and we were all locked in our houses, and I would occasionally see on these, um, these TikTok compilations of, like, Danganronpa TikToks, because they got, ex they got massive, um, during, uh, during the pandemic, and what happened was I was just curious, and I, st I walked into it, and then I was like, hmm, this seems interesting. So I kind of felt that it was, it's the subject of a rabbit hole, really. Like, that's the real subject of it. That's the real thing of it all, is that it was the subject of a, um, <laughs> it was the subject of a rabbit hole. And from there, I got more and more into the show. I got more and more into the characters. Um, I got, yeah. Um, yeah, I just, I just really enjoyed the show. I enjoyed the characters, and that's how it kind. Of, that's really how it all started. Honestly, was you know going from that. It all, all it took was TikTok videos. That's all it took. <laughs> anyway, moving on to our first of three questions from Cyborg nineteen point nine nine, who asked me, "How would you do a meeting between Junko Inoshima and and how do you think a meeting between?" Junko Inoshima and Himiko Toga be like. Now, I know a lot of people think, oh, they'd be BFFs or friends or whatever, but no, I don't think that's the case. I really do not think in any way, shape, or form that J either Junko or Himi or Toga would, would like each other. Toga is all about wanting acceptance and wanting to be loved. Deep down, that's all she wants, is to be you know, she wants to be recognized, she wants to be loved. Junko is an endless void of psychotic despair. That's all she is. She is, uh, we're talking like Joker carnage level of, um, of apathy and violent psychotic apathy to, uh, to, on top of that. So no, I do not think in any way, shape, or form these two people will be, uh, these, uh, these two would be friends. I really do not see in any way, shape, or form that either of these two people would in any way, shape, or form be friends. I think they'd try to kill each other, honestly. So, um, let's move on now to number two. Our, his second question is, who is more smarter? Uh, who's smarter? Um, who is smarter, Amadeus Cho or, Mir, or Miu uh, Iruma? I'm going to go with um, Cho. Most on the grounds of, I think Cho honestly can keep... Uh, Miu can, can't stop thinking about sex for five minutes or you know be lewd about anything i mean she did make a robot and all that but cho literally keeps his eye on the prize at all times so i really do think amadeus cho is the smarter of the two in my opinion yeah it's um it's it's <laughs> it's cho in my opinion um third question do you think kyoko kirigiri would be a great detective solving crime in gotham city absolutely I really do think Kyoko would be an excellent detective. She showed she yeah she showed fantastic detective skills time and time again. Um, multiple times um, she has seen things that the other characters can't see or see a pattern that characters can't see. Um, yeah, I think she would do really well in Gotham. Would she even get the attention of Batman? Probably. Like I do think Bruce would probably 
find uh, get attention uh, it would probably get Bruce's attention to you know bring maybe bring her in or something of that regard I do think that's possible um, I would love to see Kyoko and uh, go after Riddler I would love to see the t those two especially um, also sorry I don't know if, again if the mic's picking up someone's mowing the lawn um, sorry about that but yeah like I said I would personally love to see Kyoko go up against Riddler uh, you think he's gonna flip his shit over losing over <laughs> losing to a man dressed as a bat how do you think he's gonna fucking feel when he's uh <laughs> uh when he's just getting just trounced by a girl by a young kid as uh, yeah by this little kid this young girl who looks like i think he would look at i think he would literally look at kyoko and be like how how am i just stupid has that been my thing this whole time have i just been an idiot this whole time uh anyway so there you go thank you for those questions cyborg uh moving on now to jason Voorhees, 2011 whose first question is if you could make a spin-off akin to ultra despair girls who would be centered around and what would the story be i think i would like to do like a prequel story this would actually be like more of a prequel story than anything else of um peko peko yama and her charge uh fuyuhiko kuzuriyu the kuzuriyu clan is a yakuza clan and Pekko was raised to be her, uh, you know, Fuyuhiko's, um, cha uh, like his, her, his, his guardian. So how I would do this is, like I said, it's a prologue because, uh, spoiler alert, it doesn't end well for, for either of them. Um, but basically this prologue, this prequel story would center around, uh, Pekko and Fuyuhiko growing up in the Yakuza. This would be more like the Yakuza, I would imagine this would probably be more like the Yakuza games than um anything like it really be more of like the the yakuza games and also we get we i would definitely implement a lot of like peko's just tenacity and her ferocity i would absolutely love to implement that more and be like more of a so, like a sword sw a swinging kind of game like again i i've been playing a lot of yakuza from capcom i i really like the game series it's really cool so <laughs> I probably got that on my mind, and that's probably also like help, uh, like helping in this in this situation. So, yeah. Anyway, so second question: most underrated character um, in the series. Oh boy, most underrated character. Um, you know there are so I think there's so many. I think there's a lot that don't get a lot of love. I would say uh, Sakura everyone just knows her as like a big shrek character and i and so there's so much more to that character too honestly i really do feel like she's the mvp of the original show she inspires a a asuhina to really like rally with the others towards the end and she also has a lot of character growth even though sadly she does take her own the character does take her own life by the end of it so it, it really does suck like it really it really kind it really does suck but i do think she's Underrated, and I think a lot of people just give her shit because she was forced to be part of Monokuma's plan. So, you know, that's something also. But yeah, I really do think she's heavily underrated. There's several other characters. Again, Peko and Fu and, and uh, Fuyuhio. I, I really do think they're underrated. Tojo was another. She was, um, her, her execution, we'll, we'll get into that in a bit, but I, yeah. Mm. I think those definitely were, oh, uh maki was another oh and of course um uh i forget her name but she basically becomes a month like she takes uh, like she's the ultimate pharmacist i'm forgetting her name and i really love that character too that's the other thing that bothers me is that i really love that character and i'm forgetting her name um seiko that's it seiko Seiko is awesome. She's like she's literally like a Hulk and Mr. Hyde character where she takes all these meds and just turns into a bit in this ferocious monster and she's awesome. I really like her. If you want to look at another underrated character, look no further than that, right? Anyway, so Jason's final question for this Q&A is who in the Marvel universe could you see Junko and Mukuro being rogues gal being in their rogues gallery? I think honestly, um, I don't think it would be Spider-Man. I don't think it would be anyone else. I do see it as that. Um, hmm. 
it's a tough one. Like I feel like Spi uh, like Spider Man, might, but Spider Man probably not because she's like, oh, there's so much hope there, and I'd love to crush and despair, but that guy really uh, really stinks of despair all the time. I think it would be more like I think she'd go after like I don't know Captain America. I feel like if any if there's any prey in the Marvel universe she'd want to break, it would be Steve or more important Steve and or Sam. Um, yeah, both Captain. I think she'd be she and her sister would be enemies to both Captain Americas because they represent the hopes of their country. So I think she would go out of her, her she would use Mukuro as like the knife that she would guide as she, as she did in the show. Well, trying to psychologically break Steve and or Sam throughout the series. So yeah, um, yeah, I. That's how I kind of see it, really. So, um, yeah. Anyway, so Nick. So thank you for those questions, Jason. Um, yeah, those were all three. Next up, we have Bill McLaughlin. First question is. Who, would Junko be able to pull her shtick in Roanapur from Black Lagoon? Junko's re the problem is Junko is really goddamn smart. She's intelligent on a very terrifying level, and but could but the problem is I don't think she'd find any interest in Roanapur. It's such a depressing and despair-filled city to begin with that she, I don't think she would find any real interest in. I really do not see her really having like a major interest in in like ugh that show that's already a shit show over there i don't i don't want to bother with it i don't want to fuck with it so that's how i kind of uh that's how i kind of see it uh second question of all the characters in Danganronpa who is the undisputed mvp uh <sighs> undisputed mvp kyoko like there's no other way way around it like kyoko is the mvp she was the one who helped uh, Makoto figure out everything. She's also the one who kept him from dying several times. Yeah, Kyoko Kirigiri is the one who has the most brain cells in the room. Let's let's not dance around that at all. Like she's the one who's uh, there's only five brain cells in Kyoko's in the entire group, and Kyoko's keeping them ha like ninety five percent of the time. That's really how it, what it comes down to. Honestly, is Kyoko is the undisputed MVP of this series, no doubt about it. Um, third question: What was your favorite your favorite execution in any of the games? Uh, I got a few. Um, some of them are depressing, like Tojo's. Um, hers was really depressing. Um, it was really sad. Celestia's was memorable. Gunt Gunta's, you know, Gunta Gunkuhara, Gokuhara. His was pretty memorable. Um, there's a lot, but. Yeah, Jun of course Junko's ranks up there too, right? Like we all can't forget Junko's uh, a memorable execution either. So there you go. Anyway, so moving on now to our final person that sent questions. That's Tom Hibbert. What the first question is: What is the best way to get into Danganronpa? Like I said, I got into it through random TikToks, but I would say, um, let me use some visual aid here for a second. Um, oh shit, I dropped those. Um, so professional on this channel. I would say, uh, watch the first show, uh, the first series, Danganronpa. It did start as a game, so I watch the animes, so I haven't really played the games, but I would say, you know, check out those series first. Like, watch the TV show first or play the video game. Um, and go from there. Just the original show. You can, I think you can still find it on Crunchyroll or Hulu. Actually, I don't think it's on Hulu anymore. But I do think it is on Crunchy... I do definitely know it's on Crunchyroll, which... Last I checked, yeah, it's still there. So yeah, start with those shows. It's only 13... Ep the first series is 13 episodes long, and, and go from there. That's just me, though. So, um, moving on to our next... To Tom's second question. What would Junko and Junko think of John Kramer... From, aka Jigsaw, think of, what would they think of each other? I think Junko wouldn't see like John has this warped sense of morality. Junko doesn't. I think like a lot of people forget that. Like, oh, she'd be so much friends with this psycho or that psycho. No, she wouldn't. She would find like J like John's whole thing about wanting 
you know, to punish, you know, to punish people and have like some sick morality. She doesn't have that. All she wants to do is bum people out through horrible torture games. That's real. Uh, like she would be like, oh yeah, I see right through it, asshole. I see everything you're trying to do, and it doesn't impress me. You know, it's like that song that don't impress me much. So no, I don't think they'd be BFFs. Uh, third question: Do you think Junko would be a good villain for Jason Todd, aka Red Hood? Actually, yeah, I do think it would be a decent villain for Jason, a guy who's like tr who's th been through so much despair in his life, and now all of a sudden she is now being forced to basically like just ba like a guy who's basically trying to find the um the light that he's been missing all of his life like he's been like and junko would do everything in her power to keep him being in, in locked in despair all right so um there you go guys that's the uh q a there's the q a for you i'd like to thank everyone who sent in questions and like i said if you guys would like to be part of these q a's just hit the link below head on over to my patreon where you guys can start sending me questions uh just hit the second tier that'll allow you to get to the q a's but yeah like I said, I was actually surprised I got any with this one. I was a little worried, but it's nice to know I got a good amount of questions to, uh, to do a big enough video. But other than that, hope you all enjoyed this. I'm Mr. Multiverse. I'll see you next time in the multiverse.